It is a quiet day on EKU's campus where a death threat has canceled classes. Coming up, we'll explain why investigators think they could be closer to finding the person responsible for the scare. Dealing with some clouds on the increase across the area today. Tomorrow at this time, we're tracking some showers and thunderstorms. And we'll do just that with an updated hour by our forecast just ahead. And new developments today in the scandal surrounding the University of Louisville men's basketball program. What a former Louisville recruit has to say about the allegations. Now at 4. Tracking. Alerting. Protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Kentucky State Police are working a deadly crash right now on Interstate 64 in Montgomery County. It happened about 2.30 this afternoon in the eastbound lanes at mile marker 111 in Mount Sterling. There's a detour at exit 110. Drivers can take the Mount Sterling bypass to US 60 East and get back on at exit 113. We have a crew on the way. Monique Blair just sent us this photo of the fatal. As you can see there, there is a semi, and she will join us with a live report coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. Well, the sunshine and pleasant temperatures continue in the bluegrass. It's right around 80 degrees in Lexington right now. Here's a live look at downtown. That could look different this time tomorrow with rain returning. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? Hi, Jennifer. All good things? Well, they tell us must come to an end, and that end rolling in tomorrow with some scattered showers, thunderstorms. Tomorrow's not going to be a replay of last Friday when it just poured the entire day. Tomorrow, it's much more kind of coming at us in scattered shower fashion. Similar view uh, from our sky cam here on the east side of town compared to what Jennifer was just showing into downtown Lexington right at 80 degrees here at the station. Winds are gusting up from the southwest. That's a mild flow and it's ahead of a cold front that is throwing clouds across much of central and eastern Kentucky. No precipitation out there though just to the south of Kentucky and a part of Tennessee we've been noticing a little spike up and some scattered showers and thunderstorms. The front is off to our northwest and that cold front does arrive as we go into the day on Friday. Between now and then, your evening forecast, boy, it is nice again. 74 at around 7 o'clock, 64 by the time 11 rolls around as clouds uh, continue to thicken up across much of central and eastern Kentucky. And again, all courtesy of a cold front that is coming in from the northwest. Jennifer, when I come back in just a few minutes, we will time that front into central and eastern Kentucky and let you know if we can get this system in and out of here in time for high school football action tomorrow night. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Thank you, Chris. Eastern Kentucky University police say they are now questioning persons of interest in connection with a written death threat made on campus earlier this week. The threat said, kill all by 10 8 15, which is today. That prompted school leaders to cancel classes for the rest of the week and move tonight's EKU football game to Georgetown. WKYT's Mark Barber is in Richmond with the latest. It's our top story at four. Investigators say they are continuing to receive tips from people in the community about the person who wrote the death threat. Police say those tips have led them to persons of interest and they are now being interviewed. Normally, EKU would be buzzing with activity at this hour, but today we only saw one student walking around campus. Most of the activity here is coming from police. Several agencies are all increasing their patrols on campus. The school canceled classes after this death threat was found in a bathroom in the Powell building on Sunday. Since then, other alarming threats have been circulating around social media sites. The school says police have not found anything that links those threats to the one that was found on Sunday. The school had a similar scare back in February when a threatening message was found written in a bathroom stall in the Combs building. School administrators say they are handling this as if they are two separate cases because the handwriting is different. EKU does not want to take any chances today, so they are moving their 7 p.m. home football game against Tennessee Tech from Roy Kidd Stadium to Georgetown College's Toyota Stadium. It, it is concerning, but you know what? We've got to do the right thing and we've got to err on caution, and that's what we've done here at Eastern Kentucky University is erring on the safety of our students. The university says police will continue to provide extra campus security through fall break, especially in the areas where students eat, sleep, and study. In Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. EKU is offering a $10,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest and conviction.
New developments today in the scandal involving the University of Louisville men's basketball program. A former recruit and a former player are talking about allegations that paid escorts were used during trips to the UofL campus. Rob Bromley has reaction from UofL's president, new at four. Rob? Well, Jennifer, the latest is that WDRB-TV in Louisville is reporting a former Louisville player has confirmed escorts were used in recruiting earlier in the day. A former Louisville recruit confirmed the gist of the Louisville basketball scandal. Jaquan Lyle, he is now a freshman at Ohio State, spoke with an NCAA investigator this week about his recruiting visit to Louisville in June of 2013. He confirmed the basics of the allegations involving paid escorts during his trip to the school. This coming from CBS. The NCAA has also already interviewed former Louisville recruit Antonio Blakeney. According to sources, Blakeney is now down at LSU. What he told the NCAA has not been confirmed. UofL President James Ramsey putting out a statement earlier today. It strongly supported Athletic Director Tom Jurich. For the past 18 years, Tom Jurich has served as Athletic Director of an exemplary program at UofL. I fully support Tom as we work to identify the facts in this situation, and that is what we are doing. Tom and I are committed to the values that are fundamental to the success of Cardinal Athletics. Now, coming from UofL President James Ramsey, the statement, Jennifer said nothing of Coach Rick Pitino, who has not spoken today, neither has Tom Jurich. Jennifer. Thank you, Rob. And the Louisville scandal broke last Friday when a book was published called Breaking Cardinal Rules, Basketball and the Escort Queen. Our reporters are busy working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. A southern Kentucky man who says he killed his wife in an act of mercy was sentenced today. Chris Chumley was charged with murder in the 2013 shooting in Laurel County. He pled guilty to a lesser charge of manslaughter. From jail, he told WKYT that his wife of two decades asked to die because her cancer had spread. I shot her. Did you kill her? She died from my shots. She told me she wanted me to end the pain. I said, Jay, I said, all I've got is what the doctors gave you, the medicine, the pain pill. And she said, no. She said, I've took enough of them. I want you to stop my pain for good. The shooting renewed the debate over the right to die. Five states now have laws that allow terminally ill people to seek physician-assisted suicide. We'll have the details of his sentence on WKYT News at 4.30. The University of Kentucky has announced a new initiative to get help faster to those who overdose on heroin. A recently passed law allows pharmacists to fill naloxone orders without a prescription. The program trains pharmacists in the use of naloxone. The goal is to get the medication into homes and clinics across Kentucky. You would want to have this in the house and that the family knows where it is and how to use it, just as you would for EpiPen. Pharmacists will be trained during a statewide tour. So far, 300 have taken part. We'll have more on the initiative ahead on WKYT News at 5. That is a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Netflix is hiking prices. Find out by how much in WKYT Money Watch. And scary numbers on Halloween spending. How many billions of dollars will be spent on this month's holiday? Next on WKYT News at 4.